be a bed and breakfast. And I had some people come in once and they go, oh my goodness, you got Giannotti. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, don't you see the brown? That's his signature. I'm like, oh, of course they saw the brown. <laughs> so, um, yes, I guess they were pretty popular guys too. Actually, if you think about it, in the 1880s, there were thousands of people doing things. As a matter of fact, I had a, when it was a bed and breakfast, I had someone uh, comment, they have one of, they stayed here, they have one of the San Francisco painted ladies, mm. and they said, oh, we have the same tiles. Mm. And I researched and I found that there were only six tile makers in oh, the 1800s, wow. six. Mm. So everything, it's not, it's not such a big coincidence if we meet someone who knows your cousin from Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> The glass um, fixtures, the lights, um, including in the dining room, are by Steuben Glass, and the one behind you, also in the above you can here. And you may be familiar with these little designs on the ceilings, which you see a lot of older homes. They're called ceiling medallions. And what they were is because these lights uh, were both gas and electric. That was a big thing that Harold put in electric. It was a brand new thing. But he kept the gas because that was reliable, of course. But the gas was smoky. And so the old homes would put these medallions up there and they only had to paint that all the time when the ceiling got black. They oh, wow. <laughs> so the paint you can see is real thick. These were very detailed. There would be little lines in the leaves and so on that you don't see here. <laughs> We also have pocket doors. I don't know why they don't need more of these these days. So if you don't have a door swinging into the room. It's not wonderful. <laughs> and not only do you have the chances of this one right there too, which I'm not going to cut you guys off. It's, big, it's a big pocket yeah. yes. I would love to have a dinner party start here and then That's reveal the dining room. Oh, yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. I mean, I've been entertaining in my blog. So. <laughs> That's actually very good. That's what we used to do here. I had a friend who's a chef. So they could rent out the first floor here. And that's what we did. They started out here, and then as you should the review, and, the, and then my friend the chef would come in from the kitchen. And so the cool. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He went to California. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would do that for the uh, B&B &B guests. Oh, too. fun. Mm -hmm. And this door you'll see when you come in here later is oak on the other side. It's real solid. So. That's why I have this door stuck here. So. <laughs> but um, this block was at one time referred to as Pill Row because there were so many doctors living in these homes. <laughs> <laughs> and the setup actually was perfect for that. People would come in there and this pocket door would be shut. And this was uh, some chairs, this was the waiting room. Mm -hmm. oh. Sat in this little waiting room. And then open this door and uh, this would be the examination. I hope not the operating. <laughs> yeah, whatever we saw, Doc, in this room. Wow. And then this was closed for privacy for the family. So, friend, tell them about the shutters. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, these are called pocket shutters. I don't think Harold invented them, but he usually. <laughs> This is, um, oh, I, I didn't tell you that part. Uh, how did Frank get that silly picture over there? Well, when I found out about this house's origin, I researched it, and I found out that Harold's granddaughter, yeah, granddaughter was still alive. She lived in Maryland. She was 102 years old. So I hopped on the plane immediately. <laughs> I had to talk to her in the next five minutes here before she passed. And I got all her stories and stuff. At the same time, I met her daughter, Sarah, the great-granddaughter. And Sarah and I became buddies, and she's come out here and stayed here. Remember my friend, the chef? Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah came out with Harold's wife's recipe for a soup. And my friend, the chef, made the soup. We had Sarah stay here and have her grandmother's soup, and we had the whole deal mm -hmm. here. And so she gave me a ton of pictures um, of the family and so on here. So here's one. Um, 
This is Harold sitting right here. And this is his, uh, I guess this is between wives. His first wife died, so it's just him and his three kids. This is Carrie, the one who lived here till the 1960s. And here's the only son, Burton. And here's the daughter, um, what was her name? Gertie. Mm -hmm. And Burton's the only one who married. And he had a couple of kids. So I've had the whole family show up here. Bill Nelson's <laughs> doing this. Hi, I'm Ted amazing. from Texas. <laughs> and my good grandfather used to, you know, whatever. So I've had a whole family. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas cards, the whole thing. So cool. Oh, wow. That was a great connection. It is. The sad story is, remember Carrie living here till the 1960s? Well, she worked at a church, Fourth Press? It was a school, a Sunday school teacher, I think it was Fourth Press. Um, and her boss, the minister or whatever, loved this house. And he wanted it. And he was always telling her that it was her God-given duty <laughs> to give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> and Sanity sort of prevailed. Eventually she sold it to him, but so, so ridiculously low price, and he kicked her out and put her in a senior center of oh. a few blocks off the park. So his happy little wife moved in, and they had a lovely article written about them, about how they, they were the proud owners of this place. <laughs> when I bought this place, I, wanted, I was planning to run it as a bed and breakfast, and so I wanted everything authentic. So I bought all um, antiques from 1886 or earlier. Mm. And this lamp also was gas. And this shade is original and disgusting. And so <laughs> I keep going back and forth, should I keep the old, oh, the original, or should I go, you know, buy a new one? And so far, I just leave it. See, just leave it. it. <laughs> but it's, the silk has rotted from the heat, from the yeah, gas, and so, so well. on in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I have a friend who was an antique dealer. And he came over and he measured and everything. And then I went to his store and said, oh, I'll take one of those and six of those. You know, it was really fun. But I saw this hutch he had that was just so ostentatious with um, mermaids and birds <laughs> and cherubs and I don't know. And it was like towering, the figures falling over. I said, oh, I must have that. And he said, no, you cannot. <laughs> he said, you will pick that one. <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't pick that other thing. I've been sick of it the moment it came to the door. So originally, we were 12 houses here. And then along came the modernization thing of the 1960s. And... Um, they wanted to knock down all 12 and build high rises. And people protested for 15 years. Mm -hmm. There were sit-ins and people not letting them build. And they talked about making it a park and doing different things. And eventually they ended up leaving these five that you're lucky enough to see today. And here's a picture of what it looks like right after they raised the rest of them. I'll pass this around. And there's a companion picture piece that I'm trying to find where it shows all 12. It'll show up eventually. Hmm. I said he built a lot of homes around here. Here's my favorite, the Jewel Twice Mansion. Have you shown them this? I have not, but I um, noticed different places around the city that I say, oh, he had to have designed that. Yeah, th this one's magnificent. <laughs> where, um, where is that located? It's over on uh, Dearborn or State or... Oh, okay. Uh, state, it's on state. You yeah, know, when this was a B and D, I had this summer. stuff all yeah. over the place, but now we live yeah. here, so we don't have it. So oh, here's on Lincoln Park West, which is around the corner. Oops. There's five more handsome houses. It's the magical number of five, I guess. Uh -huh. gets left. Are these five? I'm not sure. But these have this. What's this green stone called? They're very much greenstone. It's actually called greenstone. greenstone. Okay, yeah. you can see they've got really prevalent greenstone, which is unusual. And these homes also have greenstone, but they cemented over it because uh, it's very fragile. All, all of these here also have greenstone. The man next, right next door to us, uh, restored, stripped off the cement, and exposed his greenstone, 
And then he painted it a lovely cat green ah, ah, no. to <laughs> save it. So greenstone was used for a while in this time period, and it was before they discovered the Indiana limestone. And it's also down in Pullman and the Greenstone Methodist Church there. It's amazing, but it's uh, a little, it's kind of, um, it doesn't last through the way it crumbles and it gets like, it's not as strong as limestone, so therefore they started to use limestone then at some point. But, so it's very rare. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been so lovely to hear it all again and hear other things I didn't get to hear the first time. And There's lots yeah. of stories. Yeah. We really appreciate your hospitality. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.